Sorry, but um, the gentrification issues mean that I have to go meet with the Bear Appraisal District in about 20 minutes uh, because our um, neighborhood has suddenly been raised in value and I fear that it is a virtual inflation, much as we saw in the economy in 2006 and 2007, right before the economic crash, where everyone decided that something was worth more because it was convenient to them to say that it was worth more. There's something different about San Antonio's downtown. Compared to other major urban centers, there's something gentler, friendlier, softer, more welcoming. For generations, we've been called a big city with the heart of a small town. But if certain developers and planners have their way, that will change. The very fabric of our downtown's residential safety cushion will be erased and undone and redone to model after other cities to become, in short, less San Antonio and more Pittsburgh, Chicago, Phoenix, Detroit, wherever the developers are coming from. For more than a century, our downtown businesses have been surrounded by a residential safety cushion that brings stability, safety, warmth, color, longevity to our city's heart. Neighborhoods like Tilburn Hill, Monte Vista, Beacon Hill, Dignity Hill, and King William have always provided strength and uniqueness to our fiber. They have traditionally been people with a wide variety of residents, economically, ethnically, professionally, but people who by and large have felt a commitment to benefit the city. I live in that gentle safety cushion. I have lived in that gentle safety cushion now for more than 20 years all of the time that I've been back in San Antonio, having grown up on the west side and having lived uh, for a brief period of time before I left off to college also in that safety cushion. I call it a safety cushion because I think that it is important to keeping San Antonio the kind of city that we love. Um, I live next door to a family who's been there for three generations who advised me of the fact that they watched on TV, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth in my backyard. Um, yet within a block of my house lies a developed uh, business strip, and at 5 p.m. it empties out into a dangerous nothingness. Uh, yet one block in, we walk the dog, we let the kids play in the front yard, we feel invested enough to think about permanence. I have not been in this neighborhood long. I came back to San Antonio in uh, 19... 94, um, and bought a house in Monte Vista, right before the prices went way up. A year after we bought the house, uh, we received our tax appraisal, and the appraisal of the house had gone up by $100,000. I didn't do anything to make the house better. We didn't even, we had all our furniture from garage sales, but it was you know, considered all of a sudden to be a, a very valuable place because people said it was going to be the next King William. That's what they're now saying about Beacon Hill, where I currently live. I won't give you a, a blow by blow history of what happened in Monte Vista. You're probably familiar with some of that, but let me say that the taxes went up so high that it threatened the ability of people to retire there. It became a convenient place for very mobile yuppies moving in professionally. We're going to be here for two years or three years, sell it at an even higher price because that's the way this virtual inflation goes, this artificial inflation goes, and then they move on to some other city. We had hoped to stay there forever. It didn't work out. Uh, during one period, suddenly, when everybody realized what was happening in our neighborhood, on the block we lived on, which had a few businesses, a few professional offices, and then about mm, nine or ten residences on our block. Within 18 months, all of the residents on the block, except one, had moved. Uh, we had seen 17 years of rising taxes, and it finally got to the point where it was impossible to deal with. So we made a, a decision for our family to move out of our forever home to another home. And you have to realize that my family had somebody in the 90s and somebody uh, in early elementary school and everything in between. We moved 12 blocks west. We moved across the tracks into Beacon Hill, a very nice neighborhood. If I can quote Abby Cottrell, who when she tells people she lives on Craig Place, 
And they say, oh, you live in Monte Vista. She says, no, I live $100,000 west of Monte Vista. <laughs> it's a nice neighborhood for a lot of reasons, and one of those reasons is there's economic diversity, there's age diversity, there's professional diversity. There's a, it's a really wonderful neighborhood. Um, but late last year, we saw something happening. All of a sudden, there were all these rezoning requests going like, like within five or six weeks. And as we began to see people descend almost like vultures on the neighborhood, pointing at my house and the house next, well, maybe that one, maybe we can offer over here, we can tear this one down. We began to feel like we were at the target of this onslaught, this, this development tsunami, as I call it an unraveling of the community. They used the excuse that they were trying to make it an arts community. I am an artist. I am a writer. I am the city's first poet laureate. But I am also a resident and a mother and a daughter of a senior, very senior citizen, and um, a person who cares about my, my neighborhood. Um, we've been descended upon. And I began to ask about these all of a sudden inflations in our tax values that are not based on anything except somebody's closed door session that said to a bunch of young investors, go west, young man, go west, and they did. They came, and they, the word is out that this is the place to invest. So all of a sudden, this street that I live on that goes for 17 blocks of front porch houses um, some Victorian, some post-Victorian, some American craftsmen, some just squarish stucco apartment buildings on the corner. Um, all of a sudden, they're talking about taking a tiny lot, putting in three houses sideways, like apartment complexes, and selling it for two hundred thousand dollars each. Um, I could go on. I'm not going to because uh, because I have to meet the very appraisal district and because you have to go on to many more important things. And I very much appreciate the, the comments that have been given here. Um, I've got to warn us when we start thinking about 15 percent, when the values go up by 15 percent, it's not always the values that go up by 15 percent. It's the piece of paper that says the values have gone up by 15 percent, and that piece of paper can be part of an alliance of business interests um, who have decided that this is the way they're going to make their money, who have no view for what will happen to the future of that area, but are there just to make their money and move out. I'm glad that Hemisphere was mentioned because Hemisphere uh, re uh, introduced to many of us an urban renewal, which then became a dirty word because we began to think of it as urban removal, which is what was happening. The people and the houses and the historicity were being removed. Um, I, I just feel that gentrification is such a major issue that it is probably the next civil rights, major civil rights issue of this nation. The displacement of the individual homeowner by the large alliances of investors and business interests who are interested not in permanence, not in the future, but in their own profit, uh, after which they're free to move on. I've got to tell you, I have testified in front of the uh, Zoning Commission, and um, it was amazing to watch the reaction of the council of people who the minute someone came to the front and said they were from a business, got full attention. But the minute they said they were a resident, they zoned out them, as if residents don't count, as if that safety cushion, which makes our city a good place to live, all of a sudden loses importance, loses status, loses power, um, I was one of the people testifying the minute I said resident, I could see them going back to checking their notes and reading their email and whatever. And the only thing that stayed with them after my entire testimony um, was when one of the people uh, who, again, voted to go ahead and rezone anyway, there's no problem. Uh, she said, uh, I feel sorry for that, uh, that mom who had a child who talked about her child. That was me she was talking about. But that's all that it counted for, it was just a mom, just a resident, just somebody with a child. What is the future of our city? We are here to hope that there's a different kind of voice, and a voice that doesn't require $75 to get, or $90 to get into 
uh, the event in order to make a difference on the future of our city. Thank you for your attention. And wish me luck for the very